drum roll, please. One of our most popular videos on this channel every year is where we talk about controllers and what controller should you buy? So I'm David from Above AV on Learn Christmas Lighting. Let's hit it. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. Being in the Christmas light world, and many of you know we're in the stage lighting and audio visual world as a company as well, is really interesting because the pace of change of both changes in software like X lights and changes to the controllers and hardware and pixels in Christmas lighting is actually a lot faster than the pro audio visual industry, which is really odd because you know it's essentially a hobbyist industry. Yes, there's people doing things professionally, but it's essentially a hobbyist industry. And you know, it's like a lot of the vendors are one man shops, you know, places that have, you know, one or two staff that do it part time, etc. And so, you know, every year we feel like we have to go over and talk about controllers again and give you my opinion give us the opinion we've come up with as to, you know, what the best options are and what you should buy based off of how things have changed. And that happens every year. The pace of change is crazy. So that's what we're going to do here. If you've never bought a Christmas light controller before, this is going to be for you. If you've bought a controller before but need to add more and you're not sure what, this video is for you. Let's dive in. So the first, arguably the first controller to the scene, I mean, not the first, but I would say the first controller in the Christmas light scene that got very, very, very popular as the hobby grew and ease of use came was the Falcon. Okay, so this here is a Falcon F48. I'll go ahead and pop this controller out of the way really quick. And this is an older one. And Falcon's one of the major brands. They've been one of the major brands for a couple of reasons. This one, I don't know when it's from, but it is a F48 V2, V2, I think it was a V3. It might be a V2 that I purchased potentially, again, memory's a little foggy, but potentially in 2019 and I've used in my show and for testing and in the shop ever since. There's a few really big pros to Falcons. Okay, Falcons have been around for a long time and they're very reliable and they have a very good track record of being very reliable. They generally have 16 port controllers and long range port controllers. And you know, we owe a lot to David Pitts and Falcon for where controllers are today. That being said, they're not my top recommendation. You probably know that if you watch this channel, you know, simply put the software on the controllers themselves, they do some things well right? They'll accept uploads from FPP for the configuration. But when it comes to uploading FSEQ files, managing them and scheduling them, really, I don't think you can even schedule them, but like managing them, getting the right file uploaded and, you know, adding audio, playing it is just not as fluid of an approach. It's not as easy to use as other controllers. So, you know, a Falcon can still be a great controller and they're fantastic. If you're using FPP and you know, you're just sending all your data, all your, your DDP or E131 data to the controller. But I don't love the way that Falcons do controller uploads. I think they've fallen a little bit behind. They just haven't updated as much as some of the other brands. That being said, like in terms of quality, in terms of, you know, all that stuff, like, you know, Falcons are a great controller. They're just not our number one pick anymore. They haven't been for a while. So that's why this, this guy here, which is, um, you know, one of my first controllers, I'm going to pull out of my show this year in lieu of other things, even though it's been in there for quite a while. Okay. So next, what came next to the scene? What did we find next in the controller world? What do we think about it? Okay. So next came the FPP based controllers. Okay. I've got two here that we're going to show you. Okay, so this is a Culp K32, or sorry, K16, um, just the board itself, not fully assembled. This is a Kurt controller, a Canadian brand, okay? Both have distinct advantages in that they have a microcomputer on the back, the Beagle Bone, or on the front in case of the Kurt, that is the actual brains of the controller, okay? It's the processing, it's all that jazz. There's a lot of benefits to this, okay? So it's, one is that it runs the FPP software. There's really pros and cons to the fact that they run FPP, okay? 
The pros are integrates almost seamlessly with X lights. You can upload your sequences, play, schedule, all kinds of weird plugins and stuff you can use if you're into that. You know, there's a lot of functionality there. There's a couple downsides though to the fact that they're FPP based controllers, either one. One is just simply that I have had seen both myself and customers after a few years of kind of bouncing around from setup and teardown, sometimes these beagle bones will actually just inch off the board here, right? They'll just kind of, they'll start to pull away. And at some point you start getting all these errors and stuff doesn't boot right. And you're like, what is going on? And, and you just got to push, you know, pull it out of your enclosure, push it back down. So that's one of the cons. The other con is that software updates can break things and you know, the FPP software as a whole is not developed solely just for running on these controllers. In fact, it's somewhat external, though. I mean, if you're talking about Culp controllers, obviously Dan Culp is one of the top developers of FPP. So, you know, he is generally developing FPP with these in mind, but future updates could break stuff if they weren't particularly uh, thought of for this controller. Pros. Okay, a K16, for example, has a built-in audio port. I love that. You can play music directly off it. You can have this, your one box, your one controller, running your show, ready to go. Um, cons, okay. You can plug in Ethernet on a lot of the Culp controllers, and in fact, in the past, we, we've gone to pretty much only recommending the B variants that have the Ethernet port on the Beagle Bone. Why? If you want to get wireless or you want to get Ethernet on a PB based cult, you need a USB to Ethernet or USB to Wi Fi adapter. Simply put, I have seen a lot of issues over the years myself and with customers where just occasionally, not often, but occasionally, stuff boots up and the network just doesn't work. And then your show doesn't start and things don't work. And so that can be really frustrating. And I would say that's the biggest downside to Culp's that I've seen. Some of the earlier Culp's, like this is actually, I think this is a Culp K16 V1. We saw some reliability issues across the board um, earlier on. I think they're better now, just in terms of hardware build with newer Culp's. So in general, you know, Culp's, Kurtz, Wally's Lights, you know, made by Scott Hansen, other FPP based controllers, they can be a good fit. But I would say, um, especially just because of the issues with having to use external Wi-Fi or external wired Ethernet, and the fact that that does sometimes fail and can be a big hair puller, that's why, you know, they're not quite my top recommendation anymore for that reason. Still a good buy, still a good controller. There are worse things you could buy out there when it comes to this hobby but probably not my top pick. And last, we're gonna talk about the Genius controllers. This is one of their Genius 32 Pros, so it's a big guy. The Geniuses, depending on which model you have, have some really big advantages. Okay, so let me run the one that's, grab the one here that's, that's running stuff right now. Okay, get him up. Excelente. Hopefully we can see it fairly decent, we can. So the Genius controllers have a couple really good things going for them. And in the past, I've kind of paused and not given them my top recommendation. However, in the past year, we've seen some really big improvements that are, you know, spoiler alert, making me recommend them top. Okay, what are they? A couple things really set the Genius controllers apart in hardware. Number one is like the thickness of the board you know, the quality you just see and the thickness of the solder on it. Um, everything just feels really premium in a Genius controller. The Pro models in particular, this is a 32 Pro, have these really nice built-in power supplies. So if you're building your own controller, you can just grab these little brackets off or mount the supply uh, if it's just one directly to the, the board itself. Connect them up with these wires, insert your pigtail wires into these, which they call clever locks, close them down, and you're good to go. You're off to the races. The Pro also have this awesome touch and turn knob that makes getting through the menus so stinking easy. So stinking easy. Then here I've got one of the non-pro versions, just the Genius 16, also a great buy. You know, the downsides are right. You don't, it's like a regular controller where you've got power terminals, you'll wire that to a power supply. Um, same clever lock functionality there, so you don't need a tool to tighten those down. They, they don't loosen over time, which is great. You do have a LCD. You don't have a way to adjust the menu 
on board of the controller. However, you can just wire ethernet to it. And thankfully, you know, default out of the box behavior is there is a IP address 192.168.1.50, I believe, that it will take out of the box if it's not it's seeing a DHCP server, server, aka a router, a lot of times just something handing out IP addresses. Uh, if it doesn't see that, it has a default IP address that it goes to. It generates a Wi Fi network, which, if it's not connected to a network and you go to the screen, I can actually see it here, you get a QR code that allows you to scan it with your phone and then you can connect to it on its built-in Wi-Fi network, configure the wired as you need to, and be off to the races. And I, I just have to say, like, you know, in terms of supporting people, because we do a lot of that through our Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, like, having networking being that simple gets rid of the biggest issues we see people having with their displays. Because having reliable wired and reliable wireless that's built in, that's developed just for this board means that it works every time and it's consistent and it's good. Now, um, in the past, I have not liked the Genius controllers because they don't have a show player, okay? Um, in the past year, that's gotten better, thankfully. So you now can upload from FPP Connect. You can upload your sequences to it. Uh, you stick an SD card in and it's gonna save them, okay? Um, there is a maximum size of the sequence, but I haven't run into issues with it because you're just uploading the sequence data for the pixels that are attached to it. So you should be good to go there when you're using FPP Connect. And so that was the biggest gotcha. There still is not a scheduler in there, which David pieces against, even though we like him. So you will want to use a Raspberry Pi to be your main show player. You could put it in one of your controller boxes, you could put it somewhere else, but you're gonna want that to be your main show player that's got your audio output, that's got your scheduler. And then thankfully, the Genius controllers are able to work either wired or via Wi-Fi to sync your show. Now, David Peace is gonna tell you, and I love the guy, not to use Wi-Fi for your show. I've done a good bit of testing, I'm really happy with it. That being said, especially if you want, you know, to the millisecond precision, going with a wired network is always gonna be better. If you want it to be just generally close and pretty easy to put out, the built-in wireless works, or you could get, you know, off of Amazon, the good old rainforest, some travel routers, okay? There's these little travel routers like Gleenet, GLI.net is one brand that's really popular. I mean, 15, 20 bucks, get a travel router. It can be configured to connect to your show network, and now, you're working with a much larger antenna, you're working with a dedicated piece of hardware that is doing all that network processing and just feeding it to the ethernet on the board. So that can be another great way to work within that. But I just gotta tell you, you know, 2025, I'm recommending Genius pretty hardcore because we, you know, we've tested them alongside all of our other controllers. We're finding reliability to be great. The fact that the software is made just for these controllers means that there's a lot less things that can go wrong. There aren't just random configuration options like FBP has that you can really screw up your controller with. It just generally works a lot better and a lot more consistently. Price points across all the major brands are really consistent. So that's not really a factor because it's kind of pretty much the same no matter where you get them from. And in fact, hopefully coming into stock soon-ish, we are gonna have some ready to run genius stuff at some really good prices over at Above AVL, which is really cool too. Um, but go buy them from Experience Lights or buy them from us, it doesn't matter to me. But either way, you know, we've been really happy with the genius controllers, really happy with what David's added to the functionality in the software to be able to play as a FPP remote. And you know, you can play sequences too, it's just not gonna play audio. Really cool, really great functionality. They've built a lot into it and that gives us our big thumbs up this year. So if you're looking for a new controller and it's 2025, considering what to build your show on, I can tell you this year, I'm switching my whole show over to Genius. I think it's just gonna be a lot easier. It's gonna save me a lot of frustration and you know, maybe it's worth, worth doing too. Let me know what you think. Let us know. We're gonna try to put as many of these as stock this year as we can and appreciate you watching, listening, and of course, when you need stuff, you need pixels, controllers, anything else, getting it from aboveavl.com. Not only do we get great stuff, we try to hit really great prices and offer incredible service and really good support when you need it if you have any issues. 
So if that sounds good, head over to aboveavl.com. If you're new to this and you want to start learning this hobby, then head over to the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. It is the only online step-by-step -step guide updated every year that's going to help you do everything you need to make a great display happen. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.